Right, hello and welcome to another Expert Insight interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop Online, Sales Magazine and Pipeliner CRM. Joining you as usual from San Diego. And today I'm delighted to be joined by DeWitt Jones, who's over in lovely Hawaii. How are you doing, DeWitt? I'm doing great. Yeah, and DeWitt is one of America's top professional photographers, one of the most, and one of the most sought after keynote speakers. You've, uh, you've been featured in National Geographic, you've made documentaries. The list of accomplishments is, is quite astounding. Would you bring a, a great message of, of hope and, and vision for the future, DeWitt? And I thought that today, you know, people are still kind of emerging from the pandemic. There's a lot of uh, uncertainty around, you know, their businesses, their lives, everything. There's a lot of turmoil out there in the world. How do you, how, how can people maybe refocus themselves with more positive energy so that they can emerge from all of this, you know, stronger, their business is stronger, their personal life stronger? Well, you know, I, I, um, I f fell into a job with the geographic. My first mm -hmm. published pictures ever were in the national geographic, which was kind of ridiculous, but very cool. And, um, they sent me out into the world to photograph for them. And as I began to do that, I, I reflected on, you know, I'd grown up as so many of my generation had with, <coughs> with the National Geographic. Mm -hmm. And the thing that always amazed me was that people kept them. They didn't keep any other magazine, maybe, you know, one or two architectural digests. And beyond that, they threw them out. But they kept the geographics like they were heirlooms. And as I was photographing for the geographic, I began to reflect on why that would, would be. And what I began to see is that the geographic celebrates what's right with the world. I, they don't have that as their logo, but that's what they do. And, yeah. and you read the geographic, you feel proud to be a member of the human race. You know, you, mm -hmm. even if they're talking about something difficult, you think we can do this, we can fix this, we can handle this. Uh, plus the fact that you're looking and going, oh my God, I never did, I didn't know about that, or this is mm -hmm. intriguing and fascinating. And that had gone out into the world for 50 years before I started working for them. And it built up this, God, this amazing uh, reputation mm -hmm. where, uh, you know, people, I worked for the Geographic for seven years before anybody asked me to prove it. Right. Now, now think about that. You know, you walk into a museum and you say, hey, I'd like to have these wonderful artifacts, priceless, mm -hmm. taken out of their cases so I can photograph. Them. They'd say, sure, fine. You work for the Geographic, right? Yes, I do. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. Never even stopped to ask, do you have a card or a letter? Right, or right. You know? mm -hmm. And so I was, I worked for 20 years under that vision. Mm -hmm. with that vision that I was supposed to go out and celebrate the best in every situation that I was in, not to deny the problems, sure. but just to start with the positive rather than the negative. Yeah. And that totally influenced my life, the way I approached things, the way I did things. And so when I began to speak, that's what I decided to talk about. And it's amazing how few people start that way we usually start mm -hmm. with what's wrong yeah and yeah and so do you think how much of this do you think i mean when when i think of growing up and looking at the national geographic and and obviously uh it it was a time when there was maybe less international travel you know there wasn't as much access and maybe there wasn't the internet you know way back when it all started so it was a real window to the world okay and I think despite the fact that we have, um, you know, post-pandemic, we'll have travel available to us again, and we have the internet, we have all these other ways, we still seem to be very insular in what we look at. So we look at everything very much kind of uh, blinkered to what's right in front of us and what we often see right in front of us is just problems. I, we do. Um, and the question is, what is the lens we have on no matter how we're looking? Mm -hmm. uh, you know, do we, do we approach something good, bad, or indifferent and say, how fascinating, right? Mm -hmm. If you start with how fascinating, you're going to engage with it. If you, if you start with, oh my God, you know, mm -hmm. you're not, you're just going to get down. So the question that I have to people is, does their, their vision, their perspective, give them energy or take it away? 
Right. And right. and that's how it plays into a business context. You know, we we like people who are engaged. We like people who see possibilities. Mm -hmm. And that starts with your own personal vision. Forget what your company may give you. They probably say we want to be the biggest and best in the entire world and give our shareholders <laughs> great value. But what is it that you hit the world with every day? Mm -hmm. And if I ran a big company, I would want every one of my reports to have, they might, they're not going to all be the same vision, but they mm -hmm. would be a vision that gets them up, that gives them energy, that makes them excited to be in the world. And I think that's a really important point to it because I do believe that most people do not have a vision for their own life. Uh, most people don't take the time out or stop to think even about their job. They may think, well, I, I do my job to get money to pay for my mortgage, to support my family or whatever. But really beyond that, like, what am I, what's my goal and vision for my own life? Because as you say, I mean, it's hard to be excited if you don't know what you should be excited about. That's right. And and it changes, but the attitude doesn't mm -hmm. change. I mean, uh, one of the other things I talk about, <clears throat> excuse me, is there's more than one right answer, right? Mm -hmm. When we get out of college, they say that we've taken 2,500 multiple choice tests, wow. all of which have one right answer. Right? Mm -hmm. they, they, <laughs> they tell the professors that we know the, the, what they want to teach us but they convince us that there's one right answer. And then we go out into the world and people say, be creative, come up with something new. And you go, no, 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 no. I tried to do that and I got hammered, right? <laughs> so, but as a photographer, especially now with digital, I'll go out, I like to shoot waves here on Molokai. I'll go out mm -hmm. and shoot a thousand, a thousand waves in an afternoon to get one shot. I don't care. I just keep looking at it differently. Now, if I could convince people to do that with their children, with their spouse, with their work, with, you know, in sales, how can I come at somebody a different way? And just to believe that there's more than one right answer, which I do very naturally as a photographer, their lives would change. And then they would, as they go through life, be comfortable, not about trying to find the right answer in their life, but continually find the next right answer. Okay, yeah. what's right for today? What's, how do we move beyond what we just did yesterday comfortably? Mm -hmm. And I think exactly what you just outlined there is that's, that's a quite a simple and easy process because sometimes it sounds like it's daunting, right? I need, to find, I need to find the answer. But if you, like you say, if you take it like, let me find, you know, let me find some of the answers for the problems in front of me today or for the things I need to achieve today or this week or this month, then that's such a less daunting approach. It's like you, for instance, like you're going out to photograph waves. You're not going out to photograph the whole ocean at once. Right. You're going to you're going to start with a with something that is manageable, mm -hmm. but even there you're going to be you're not going to get yourself locked in. Right. And that so what else does that help with? It helps with listening, right? If you if you believe there's more than one right answer and you're in a meeting and people are talking, you're really listening to what other people are saying. You haven't decided what what the marching orders are. Mm -hmm. That's going to give the possibility of a far more interesting solution coming up than if you know going in and you're not going to move. Mm. Making people comfortable with that is, is what I try and do. It's not, I'm not teaching rocket science at all, but when you said you're right, not a lot of people think about their own vision. Mm -hmm. They don't have even a visual metaphor to say, what lens do I have on today? Mm -hmm. Do I have on my wide angle lens when I can see, you know, horizons beyond horizons or do I have on my macro lens when I can't see beyond the pencil lead in my pencil? <laughs> uh, and even just having that come up to them is shifts things, makes them yeah. go, oh God, this, this could be much easier than I think it is. <laughs> Yeah, and I think you're right because I think to, uh, you know we, we tend to sometimes trap ourselves, uh, as I said, inside our, our own small world. And going back to the National you know, Geographic metaphor, 
that was a an opening of the world, an opening of the world to to people and places that you may never, you know, probably never ever going to visit, but you get to see it brought alive in in photographs like yours. And I think that's. And I think we need to somehow look at life in the same way that, you know, if we open our eyes, there's the, the potential out there. We can look at, we can decide whether we want to go there or whether we don't want to go there. It's our choice. Yeah. And, you know, and we have that with the net, but we don't often use that. We go mm -hmm. back to the same news broadcast. <laughs> we go back to the same stuff and we get the same story. Mm -hmm. And we either get locked into it where we can't even have a dialogue with somebody else because we have the answers. We mm -hmm. looked at the same, uh, the same network for the last six months and now we believe it. Mm -hmm. I find it, you know, I mean, the number, for example, of news apps that I have on my phone, mm -hmm. uh, you know, and I'm just as likely to start with Al Jazeera as I am with the New York Times. Mm -hmm. uh, because that to me is another right answer. How do, how do I look at things differently? How do people look at us and we look at them? Uh, I'm a pretty liberal guy, but I'll read Fox News because I want, to, I want different perspectives. Um, yeah, and, and, unfor and unfortunately, Dorit, though, I think we live in a world where, unfortunately, you know, a lot of people don't, a lot of people don't do that. They take their, as you say, they go to the one source they don't even, they read the headline, maybe the first paragraph and they go sorted. I, I've got my opinion figured out for the, for the day, for the month, for the week, whatever it is. And, and they don't, and they don't explore uh, all of the, and it used to, it, it, it's almost like people's natural curiosity. They're, they're, they're diminishing their natural curiosity. Well, they are. And usually what that comes up in if you only have right ans one right answer, mm -hmm. the thing that comes up if that's threatened is fear, right? Yeah. Oh my God, I figured it out. I have my right answer. Don't tell me there's another one, mm -hmm. right? That's a very, very insular way of being, very rigid way of being. Uh, and it's not gonna help you out in any situation. Not gonna help you out in business, not gonna help you out with your family, not gonna help you out in, in your vision of, your own mortality. So, yeah. you know, and, and, and these things that I talk about seem pretty simple, but it's amazing how many people come out of an audience and say, oh my God, I, you know, telling me to put another lens on was like, you know, touching me with light. I go, really? I mean, it shouldn't be that hard. <laughs> yeah, but it's true. And, it, and it's true. And if you, if you do restrict your, your point of view, if you restrict the and if you restrict the you know the, the people and influences around you to very narrow set of, of worldview or whatever it is um you are you're never going to have breakthrough thinking because breakthrough thinking comes from being challenged and if you're surrounded by and if you're always looking to confirm your own bias in whatever you consume or as i said the people you surround yourself is you're never going to have those creative breakthroughs it's almost impossible yes and and you know in, in business, uh, my brother, who's the businessman of our family, started Travelocity and also was the founding chairman of Kayak. And one of the things he loved to do was to get disparate people together in a place that was safe and let them come up with a thousand ideas, knowing that, you know, 900 of them weren't worth anything. Mm -hmm. But you got to the hundred that were. And I was surprised when I started uh, you know, giving corporate speeches to find out that people say, oh, we want our people to be really creative. And I find mm -hmm. out, no, 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 not really. We want them to draw up to the line. We don't yeah, want yeah. them to draw beyond the line, you know, thinking out of the box. No, 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 mm -hmm. no. We really don't want that's scary to us. And for a lot of situations, no, that's not the kind of thinking you want. But if you don't have it ever, if you don't have a place where people feel free to try something different, then you don't innovate. And in this world, if you're not innovating, you certainly are moving backwards. Yeah, and especially now because it's uh, you know coming out of the situation that we're we're in now. Uh, 
a lot of a lot of businesses and people are going to have to innovate because their their traditional way of executing business may be uh, it may be different now. It may not be able to execute at all. You may have to pivot. You may have to look at different ways of doing things. And so now is a time when it's going to be critical to be creative. Absolutely. And remember that when you were in high school, creativity was associated with painting or sculpture or <laughs> dance or something, you know, and the football guys didn't want to be creative, right? <laughs> they didn't think of themselves as creative. And yet they'd go out and put on a performance on Saturday on the field that was intensely creative. Mm -hmm. But you wouldn't, I, I, I lectured to a company that had started at zero three years ago and now had a tremendous market cap. And I asked the audience, how many of you guys think you're creative? Nobody put up their hands. Right, right. Well, who built it? Come on, you know, who, who made this? Uh, but they still didn't have that feeling. Uh, and, mm -hmm. and not just the men, the women in the company. I mean, the whole thing was they didn't feel that they were creative, although they were creating every day. Yeah. So again, it's another, it's another visual in a sense of how do, we, how do we feel about ourselves? And if we don't think we're creative, why not? Well, I never was in a play in high school. Yeah, really? no, yeah, yeah, exactly. And I'm not a good, I'm not good at drawing or whatever. I'm just, uh, I, I need people who go like, well, I'm more of a doer, but, but thing, but things never get done unless people come up with creative ideas on how to do them. So the implementers and the doers are just as, uh, just as important in the creative process. And if you think about it, do it right in all of our, if you just come back to the individual level in all of our lives, we, we create lives for ourselves. Of course we do. Yeah. Yes. So if and anybody that's, that's says I'm not creative, they should just take a stock of their life and say, how did I get here then? Right. If you're not creative, you're not human. Do you understand that? You create things. And, and again, I think in so many situations, uh, just redoing our thoughts about, about creativity, about, about celebrating what's right with the world. You know, mm -hmm. you're drawing breath on a little piece of rock in the middle of a big, vast, predominantly empty universe. You should be totally full of gratitude every day. Mm -hmm. And yet we bitch about the fact that Amazon has slowed down my order and I'm not going to get it for two days. You know, that's crazy. Yeah. Uh, that's a fact, but it's not, mm -hmm. shouldn't affect your <laughs> mood or how you, how you feel about how lucky you are to be on the planet here. Yeah. And I do. And I think that's a great message, uh, you know, to finish up on here, DeWitt, is I do think that, that, um, gratitude is a very, very powerful thing that if you do look at and say, look at how lucky I am. I mean, we're blessed. I mean, I, I originally came from Ireland. I think every day I'm blessed to have been in 22 years here in the States and all of the opportunities that it's given me. And when people do raise, you know, issues with the country or whatever, I always say, yeah, those, those are issues and there are things that need to be solved. But I will tell you, you're living in a place of immense opportunity that maybe in other places, I can guarantee it, there's not the same level of opportunity. So you need to start from that point of saying how, how grateful and how great opportunities there are. And then let's fix the bits that maybe aren't working so good. Absolutely. Then we'll go and fix what we have to fix. But yeah. if you come back and ground in that, mm -hmm. uh, if you ground in just how lucky you are and, and take it all the way down to being alive. I mean, mm -hmm. you, if yeah. you go beyond that, you say, well, he's got a bigger house than I do or a better <laughs> car or whatever. No, 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 no. Let's get down to the fact that, you know, this, the real seven wonders of the world are to see, to hear, to smell, to taste, to touch, to laugh, to love. You know, mm -hmm. that's, you think about that every morning and you go, oh, wow. I got, I got probably the first five, the other two I get to choose. I'm going to have a good day. Yeah, absolutely. And get, get, you know, check your lens and take a picture, take a really nice picture of your world and, and examine it and look at all the great things that are in it, just like we always looked at the pictures in, in National Geographic. And I'm sure over the years, I'm sure I've stared at some of your photos because I've always been a big fan of National Geographic. So. Probably have. Yeah. Well, listen, thanks. This has been fantastic. All of DeWitt's information will be in his contributor bio, but please, before we go, DeWitt, please let people know a bit more about what you do today and uh, how they can learn more. Well, uh, I do um, 
You can find me at DeWittJones.com. I give corporate talks. Used to give them all over the world. Now give them virtually uh, <laughs> from right here in Molokai. Uh, I have the, the photography at this point in my life is more in in support of those talks. I uh, I teach occasionally, but more I'm teach I'm shooting for my joy. But what I'm really interested in is to teach people how to put on a lens of celebration, how to change their vision, and how to be more positive in the world. Fantastic. Listen, this has been great to uh, do it. My name is John Golden, Sales Pop Online Sales Magazine, Pipeliner CRM. See you all for another interview really soon. Thank you.